Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, May June 2022, paper 63. Let's get started. Question 1. The apparatus shown was used to determine the percentage of oxygen in a sample of air. The glass tube was heated strongly at X. As we can see, there is a glass tube in the middle between part A and part B, and this glass tube contains copper pieces. We will heat it strongly at the point X. The sample of air was passed backward and forward over the copper pieces in the tube. So the air moved from part A to part P, then again from P to A over the copper pieces. And the source of heat was gradually moved along the tube from X to Y. During the experiment, the copper pieces in the glass tube reacted with oxygen in the air sample. So as the air moved from A to B and backward from B to A, it reacted with the copper pieces in the glass tube. Name the item of the apparatus labeled B. This part is called gas syringe. Name the item of the laboratory equipment that could be used to heat the glass tube strongly. In the laboratory, we use Bunsen burner for heating. So we'll place Bunsen burner here below the glass tube at the point X to heat the cover pieces. The cover pieces at Y didn't change color when they were heated. Suggest why the cover pieces at Y didn't change in color. As we, at, the, at the beginning, we used the Bunsen burner to heat the cover pieces at point X. So they will react with oxygen in the air. Then we start to gradually move the Bunsen burner to the point Y and it will not react, not change, no change in color because all the oxygen has used up at the beginning when it is react with the copper pieces around the point X. Then the table shows the volume of air in each part of the apparatus at the start of the experiment. At part A, there were zero centimeter cube of air at the glass tube eight centimeter cube and at part b 94 centimeter cube so the total volume of the air in the apparatus at the start of the experiment will be 94 plus 8 so the total volume will be 102 centimeter cube of air in the, the in the whole apparatus the table shows the volume of gas in each part of the apparatus at the end of the experiment. Again, at A, we have zero centimeter cube. At the glass tube, we have eight centimeter cube. And at part B, we have 75 centimeter cube. We can easily notice that the amount of air decreased from 94 to 75 at the end of the experiment. So we want to calculate the percentage of oxygen in the sample of air. Why the volume of air decreased from 94 to 75? Because part of air, which is oxygen, reacted with the copper in the glass tube. So the volume of air decreased. The decrease in volume of air calculated by subtracting 94 minus 75, it will be 19 centimeter cube. So the decrease in volume is 19 centimeter cube. This amount is the oxygen, the amount of oxygen in the sample of air. So to calculate the percentage of oxygen, we will divide the volume of oxygen by the total volume of air, which was 102. 19 divide 102 multiply by 100. So the percentage of oxygen will be 18.6%. Then, question two. Student investigate the reaction between aqueous sodium hydroxide and two different solution of dilute hydrochloric acid with different concentration, acid Q and acid R, using two different indicators. Here we have steps for experiment one. We fill the purette with the acid Q, then some of the acid will run out from the purette. We will measure 25 centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide, pour it in a conical flask, then add few drops of methyl orange as indicator. Start adding hydrochloric acid till see the color change. So the initial reading of the purette, as we can see here, it is 2.7. And after 
reaching to the end point and changing color, the reading is 20.3. 20, uh, 20 so the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid Q is 17.6 by subtracting the final reading minus the initial reading. Then we will repeat the experiment again using acid, Q, acid R instead of acid Q. The conical flask rinse it with distilled water, then the puret rinse it with distilled water, then dilute hydrochloric acid R, then we fill the puret with acid R. Again, we will have the initial reading, final reading. Initial reading is 8.5 and the final reading is 43.7. So the total volume of hydrochloric acid R is 35.2. We will do also experiment three. We uh, emitted the uh, conical flask with the lens with distilled water. Experiment two was repeated using another indicator, which is thymolphthalein indicator instead of methyl orange. Again, we will get the reading of the purette, the initial reading seven and the final reading 42.2. So the volume of hydrochloric acid here is 35.2 we can easily see that it is the same reading as experiment 2 35.2 also so changing indicator didn't change the final volume of hydrochloric acid needed for reacting with acid R then here he asks you to determine the symbol whole number ratio of the volume of acid R used in experiment two and experiment three. We said it's the same volume, 35.2 and 35.2 also in experiment two. So the ratio is one to one. Did use the volume of the hydrochloric acid Q needed when experiment one is repeated using thymolphysaline indicator instead of methyl orange. For experiment two, the volume was the same for both indicators. So in experiment one also for the acid Q, the volume of uh, hydrochloric acid used will be the same as experiment one with methyl orange. So it will be also 17.6. Compare the concentration of acid Q used in experiment one to the concentration of the acid R used in experiment two, and you must explain your answer. The concentration of the acid Q is double that of the acid R because the volume used in, in case of the acid Q is 17.6 is half that of the volume used in case of the acid R which is 35.2 uh, so using half the volume to neutralize the same volume of sodium hydroxide means that Q is double the concentration. State how the result would change if at all the aqueous sodium hydroxide is warmed before adding dilute hydrochloric acid and give a reason to your answer. Of course, there will be no change in the result by warming sodium hydroxide before the experiment because the, there will be no change in the volume of hydrochloric acid needed to neutralize sodium hydroxide. So warming sodium hydroxide will not change the volume or the number of moles of sodium hydroxide uh, that will be neutralized by hydrochloric acid. State the advantage of using a pipette instead of measuring cylinder in this experiment. The pipette is more accurate in measuring volume. Explain why a white tile is used in this experiment. The white tile is used to make the color change at the end point can be seen easily and clearly. At the start of experiment two, the puret was rinsed with distilled water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid. So we will first wash it with distilled water to remove uh, uh, the acid Q used in experiment one. State what is removed. When we wash the puret with the acid R, we are removing water. Why the puret doesn't need to be rinsed at the start of experiment three? Because in experiment three, we use the same acid R that is used in experiment two. After the puret was filled with the dilute hydrochloric acid at the start of experiment one, some of the acid run out from the puret. 
why we made this to make sure that the level of the hydrochloric acid is on the scale give other reason why it is important to run some of the acid of the purette after it has been filled at the first time in the in an experiment we do we do so to make sure that the part of the purette below the tap is filled with the acid question 3 solid s and solution y were analyzed solid s was anhydrous copper sulfate tests were done on each substance first we'll start with solid s a flame test was carried out on solid s solid s was copper sulfate so the copper cations will give us blue green flame color the remaining solid s was dissolved in distilled water to form solution t and then the solution divided into two portions on the test tube state the color change that will happen when the water was added to solid s to form solution t here we have solid copper sulfate anhydrous copper sulfate so it is white in color when we add water to make solution now the copper sulfate becomes copper sulfate hydrated copper sulfate and the color change into blue so the solid s change from white to solution t which is blue to the first portion of solution t we will add dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of barium nitrate so solid s contain sulfate ions and sulfate will react with barium to form barium sulfate which is white precipitate so your observation here will be white precipitate is formed to the second portion of solution t we will add ammonia drop wise than in excess adding ammonia will react with the copper ions here to form copper hydroxide which is blue precipitate so your observation here will be blue precipitate will form it which is will dissolve in excess to give deep blue solution then we will go to tests on solution y the first test is flame test was carried on solution y and the flame become lilac the only cation that give lilac color is potassium so here we have potassium cation then solution y was divided into three portions to the first one we will add hydrochloric acid in a boiling tube then warm the mixture strip of filter paper soaked in acidified potassium manganate was held at the mouth of the boiling tube the acidified aqueous potassium manganate remains purple so here the test is negative we don't have sulfur dioxide gas no change in color so we have a negative test here for test 3 dilute nitric acid is added then drops of aqueous silver nitrate were added to the second portion of solution y as we said before silver nitrate is used to test halide ions here the observation is yellow precipitate so the halide ion present is iodide ion because it gives white precipitate with and a silver nitrate gives white precipitate with chloride ions creamy precipitate with bromide ions and yellow precipitate with iodide ion so the anion here is iodide then aqueous ammonia was added drop wise then in excess to the third portion of solution y when we add ammonia a white precipitate formed which dissolve in excess to give a colorless solution and here is the characteristic test for zinc cations so the solution contain potassium cations and zinc cations and anions of iodide anions name the gas tested in test 2 here the gas tested was sulfur dioxide but the test is negative identify the three ions in solution k as we said we have potassium cation zinc cation and iodide anions question four 
When solution A and solution B are mixed, they act slowly to form iodine. Starch solution is added to the mixture to act as indicator. When solution A and B form a certain amount of iodine, it, th there will be a sudden color change to blue-black. So, iodine gives a blue-black color with starch. Plan an investigation to find out the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction between solution A and solution B. So, we will make experiment, different experiment. Each time, I will change the temperature to record the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. But the volume of solution A and solution B will be the same at each experiment. So, the first step, we will measure solution A and solution B. A known volume of solution A and solution B is measured using measuring cylinder. Then we have to record the temperature of solution A and solution B. Mix the solution together with the starch indicator and record the time needed until the solution change into blue-black color. After that, we will repeat the experiment at different temperatures by heating or by warming the two solution before mixing them. We will warm them, determine their temperature, and then mix them with the starch indicator. Record the time needed for the solution to change into blue-black color. Then we will compare the time needed each in each experiment and to see the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction. Of course, the shorter the time, there will be the higher the rate of reaction. Here we come to the end of our exam. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates. Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.